Hello everyone, welcome to Achievers Academy. Today we will be talking about an important topic that is interim budget. This particular terminology has been there in the news quite a long time and in next 3-4 days this is going, be, going to be the new buzzword across the nation. So what is the meaning of interim budget? Though we already know that every year okay, and normal budget is also presented. We call it as union budget or general budget of the government. So when we have the terminologies like union budget, general budget, all of a sudden we also now hearing about interim budget, what it is. Let us discuss about it. Okay. Now, our finance minister, as you already know that, before there was uh, presentation of budget was uh, February 28th. Okay. But... Uh, Arun Jaitley, the, uh, the ex-finance minister of our country and also the expired, he, he is not there with us at this point of time. So he has changed the date from the presentation of budget from last week of the last week of the working day of the February to first working day of the February. Now this uh, January 31 is there. Tomorrow is the budget presentation day is there. So every year, this particular government, NDA government brings budget on February 1st okay and this is going to be the last budget before 2024 general elections in May and June so before the next general elections this is the last budget presented by Nirmala Sita Raman madam one important fact that you should know about it once she presents the budget tomorrow in the parliament she will become the first woman finance minister of the country first woman finance minister of the country who has presented what six budget consecutively but one more catch is there here please uh, remember this point also Indra Gandhi ji also presented the budget but she did not work as a finance minister nor she presented the budget whole of her tenure she presented only for one year Indra Gandhi ji so the first woman finance minister of the country, if the question comes, it is Indra Gandhi ji. If the question comes in this way, the first woman full-time finance minister of the country means it is Nirmala Sitaraman madam. She is the only lady who has presented the six budgets consecutively. So this particular point you have to remember. Now an interim budget is going to be present on February 1st by her and we know the facts about it. Now we have to see that how this interim budget is different from the full union budget. Let us go ahead with the discussion. Okay. What is an interim budget? Basically interim budget is presented when the country is going for a major transition. It could be transition is nothing but it could be elections. Okay. It could be elections. Now just imagine a point here after four months election is there. It is not morally sounding good that a government will uh, present a full-fledged budget and do lot of policy reforms and do lot of changes in the manufacturing, agriculture. So it is not morally uh, fine to bring big changes because this government, even though if they present the big budget also, full budget also, they may come to power, they may not come to power. That uncertainty will be there. That is the reason on the moral grounds, okay, whenever the last year of the uh, ruling party will be there they will bring out a smaller budget okay that smaller budget which generally outlines major aspects of the uh, budget that is called as interim budget so interim budget is presented when a country is going from a transition it could be an election it could be a emergency situation like war etc it could be like extension extension of parliament uh, for another one year or another six months because of any emergency because of any national calamity it could be any reasons my dear students but the country is going for a major transition country has been uh, or you can say that has come to a standhill okay because of some emergency situation at that time we will not have the much time to prepare a bigger budget so we'll prepare a smaller budget that smaller budget we call normally as interim budget okay that's because the incumbent government cannot present a full budget in the election year which I have told you. Because if, even if this government present a full budget, they may be in power, they may not be in power. That could be the 
major reason interim budget is presented. The finance minister delivers an interim budget at the combined session of Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha within parliament. So Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha people will uh, be sitting together and she will present the budget. Madam will present the budget and everyone will hear out. Okay. So major takeaway from this particular side is interim budget is presented when a country is going for major transition. This could be the reasons. Okay. Now, how does an interim budget is different from a full budget? Our full budget is there, no? Okay, normally, every year, whatever the government is presenting, no? It outlines comprehensive financial plan for a year. Comprehensive means it covers our taxation policy. It covers our expenditure uh, allocations. It covers our revenue, sources of revenue. It covers government policy uh, decisions. It covers government uh, new schemes. It covers, okay, the length and breadth of the country. It covers all social, economic, environmental aspect. A comprehensive policy will be presented by the government in a union budget. Okay, whereas in contrast, the interim budget is a brief presented only for a next few months because today is February 2024. Okay, uh, March, April, May and June, June are what? Uh, uh, elections only. So only for a few months okay so that's why interim budget is basically presented only keeping in mind for the next few months only not for the complete whole year and in this particular budget government will generally okay uh, consider what is most important like immediate expenses and revenues okay immediate expenses of the government is nothing but salaries of central government staff salaries of president uh, okay and also the chief justice of india governors and administrative expenses of the government only that kind of expenses are covered not a elaborate policy strategy okay the interim budget is nothing but a stop gap stop gap is nothing but elections to be held in the june and july now it is in february february march april may june so this is a stop period is there so to fill this top period okay the interim budget is presented because government or the country cannot function without the circular flow of income you might be aware of this fact also okay that's why interim budget is a short gap okay covering government finances for a short period of time until a new government takes over that is how we can ensure financial continuity financial continuity is nothing but allocation should continuously happen to the most important areas that is only called as financial continuity now so when will the full union budget will be released if you see 2014 the nda bjp government came into power they were again re-elected in the year what 2019 in the 2019 also okay the elections were held in july so in 2019 in February, they presented again an interim budget. Okay, again a presented interim budget. It means what? We are expecting that this year also, uh, as the interim budget is presented on February 1st, so government told that tentatively, means the government is expecting that if they come to power by July 2024, they will present the, present the full budget, like that the government said. So same pattern they are following, what they have followed in the year 2019 okay so whenever the general elections happen okay last time uh, in 2019 july 5 was the date uh, uh, date or month uh, where the full budget was presented so the same thing will be going in the year 2024 also meanwhile the interim budget follows the same timeline remember this point timeline will not change means just just concentrate on my word very carefully you know that financial year starts from April 1st to March 31st. This is the financial year. And this whole year, union budget or general budget is presented. And which outlines a complete receipts revenue policy of this complete year. Now, whenever the interim budget is there, will the time will be, if our interim budget, will the time will be less than 12 months? Like it is presented for 4 months. Can we say that it is only for 12 months the timeline is there? Uh, or 4 months the timeline is there? So we have to be sure that whether it is union budget, whether it is interim budget, the budget financial year will not change. It is also for 12 months only. Union budget and interim budget, both of them are for 
12 months like April 1st to March 31st. So timelines are same. There is no change in the timeline. Okay. And presented on the first working day of the February. The timing allows the government to prepare the financial year starting in April despite being in the election phase. So how the timeline was there with regard to the union budget, how they used to follow that they used to start preparing the budget in the November, December, January. The same process they follow for the interim budget also. Okay, there won't be difference in the timelines. Remember this point. How does a vote and account fit into interim budget? Okay, so interim budget is little bit bigger amount of money. Let us suppose 100 crore rupees of budget will be presented in interim. Okay, vote and account is that part of 100 crores which is actually uh, what which actually used for immediate expenses of the government. Okay, remember this point. Interim budget is a umbrella word. Under it, a vote and account will be there. So let us suppose interim budget is 100 crores. What an account will be 20 crores. This 20 crores is nothing but to meet the immediate expenses of the government. Clear my point. One more striking difference between interim and the vote and account is when an interim budget is there or any of the budget is there, it needs to have a parliamentary approval. Means it should be passed by Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. Whether it is interim or normal budget. But what an account, how much amount of money is pulled under the vote and account budget, okay, it does not need to uh, follow the parliamentary approval. Very, very important difference. Remember this point. Okay, vote and account, as I have told you, is a part of interim budget where government vote and account with the help of vote and account, government will meet its critical expenditures like salaries of the government start, staff, routine administrative cost, etc. Okay, it steers clear of significant policy shifts or a new extensive initiatives which are reserved for the comprehensive budget post election. So basically extensive initiatives, new schemes, new plans, new policies, new strategies will not be done in what both interim and vote on account. Okay, this interim budget will be uh, effective for two months and could be extended up to what four months. Right. What can be, what can't be included? Remember this point. What can't be included? So I will just sum up this particular chart, a slide. See, interim budget is presented tomorrow. Okay. Election Commission of India says that the government which is, uh, which is like, which obviously the parliament is getting dissolved, Lalok Sabha is getting dissolved, a new government has to come. The outgoing government, now we call the NDA government or BJP government as outgoing because they may stay, they may not say, we don't say, but at this point of time, their tenure is over, they have to leave the house. They have to leave the house. So that house is called as, uh, uh, that government is called as outgoing government or caretaker. Means till the new elections and a new mandate is given by the people, this particular ruling party will be acting as a caretaker of the government till they are elected democratically in a full-fledged way. Okay. Now, what has happened here is, okay, Election Commission of India says that when an outgoing or a caretaker government is there, no, they should not make any big promises. They should not bring any big policy reforms. They should not give a big expenditure uh, uh, outlines. They should not make any new uh, what uh, schemes that may attract the voter uh, to vote for the ruling party. Okay. In the uh, tomorrow, the Nirmala Madam may say in the parliament that every unemployed youth will get 5,000 okay, from March onwards. So what will happen? All of a sudden, all of us youth will start voting for the BJP government or not? Yes. That is the reason in order to protect the voters from the influence of the ruling party, which is outgoing for this year, election commission puts restrictions and asks not to make any policy decisions that will impose or influence the voters towards the ruling party. That is what is there here. The ruling government is also not allowed to present economic survey also. Economic survey talks about all good things done by the government. So when people get to know about the good things of the government without any criticism and without any comparison of the past data, what will happen? Economic survey will give what is good, good. But uh, people should be there to analyze it or not. Yes, for the analysis purpose, a lot of time will come. So it may happen that election may also get over. So economic survey, election commission says that don't release it till you are not elected again. 
what is typically included in interim budget as i've already told that some important concepts and terminologies and indicators and numbers are included in the interim budget so government generally talks about two to four months of expenditures that much of budget will be there go two to four months how much amount of uh, uh, revenue the government will get what is the fiscal deficit what is what is the financial performance of the government from last year to this year and for next year what could be the projections only this will be excluded okay but in the interim budget one important opportunity is given for the outgoing government they can talk about their economic achievements before public opinions okay after the elections so that is before the elections important fine then why do we even need an interim budget okay why actually we need an interim budget so obviously from april 1st onwards there should be allocation should be done april may june will be the gap period before general elections will happen so this particular three months have to be definitely uh, salaries should be given expenditure should be borne by the government or not yes so it is a practical reason that interim budget need to be passed in order to have a financial continuity in order to have the governance going okay otherwise if the money is stopped and the budget is not passed because constitutional mandate uh, mandates the government to pass the budget so without passing the budget they cannot do it so if the budget is not passed money will not be allocated money will not be dispersed to the various ministries for the various social welfare schemes that is the reason it is practically uh, what uh, we cannot imagine not having money or having a stagnation of what money that is why interim budget is normally presented remember this point another important point i will i am telling you interim budget to present the interim budget it is not a constitutional obligation it is for a practical reason we present the interim budget to manage our expenses so as i've told you that is an interim budget necessary no constitution does not say that it is necessary to present an interim budget but we do it because of some practical reasons to manage what our expenditures clear right so what is the difference between a interim budget and voter account the interim budget is a broader means little bit broader gives lot of revenues little bit of expenditures will consider two to four months okay talks about some old schemes etc so within the interim budget we will have what vote on account okay so vote on account is a sub part of interim budget okay remember again one point this is passed without parliamentary consent okay but interim budget need to be passed with the parliamentary consent any word that starts or ends with the budget should be passed by the parliament as because vote on account does not start or end with the budget word it need not, need not to be passed by the parliament thank you this is the important basic that one you uh, one need to know in order to learn tomorrow's uh, with master tomorrow's interim budget so make sure that all of you spread this particular video so that all of you can get the concepts clear clear and they, you can better understand the budget tomorrow thank you have a good day